Hi friends, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about an Azure service called API Management or APIM. Before you understand APIM, let's understand what exactly an API is. Okay. So API essentially acts as an interface in order to connect two different application components. So let's say if I show you over here, you have a flightprices.com website available to you. And what this website does, it gives you a free plan. And it basically exposes its API. On that free plan, I can make 80 calls per minute. So on the free plan, I have this option available to me. Now, this is flightprices.com website, which basically tracks the prices of web uh, prices of your flights in different websites. So it tracks all the prices and then you have an airline website. So this airline website is where you actually book your tickets. Now it also allows 60 calls per minute when you connect to this airline website. So both these websites have exposed their APIs and using these APIs, I can interact with both these websites. Now, if I want to create a new intermediary layer, let's say I have purchased a startup. My startup is Flights Deals uh, startup. Okay. So what I do, I basically look at this uh, website. I get some data from here and see the tracked prices. And I also maybe book some flights wherever, let's say, price goes below uh, $50 or $20 uh, for a specific, uh, specific area you want to travel to. So you can define, let's say I want to travel from one city to the other city. And if the price drops below $50, automatically book my flight. So that's what you want to achieve. In order to achieve that, what you can do, you can create your own API in between. And this API interacts with both these APIs. And once you interact with these APIs, maybe you're charging like one USD per month in order for anyone to access your flights deal uh, API over here. Okay. So you, this is a very common use case where most companies create these intermediary APIs and you can plug into those APIs and maybe use it for your own usage as well. So API management helps you to do all of these things in Azure. Now, in order to understand the API management structure, you can see this diagram over here. So this is an Azure API management service, which helps you to do most of these things as part of a PaaS offering from Microsoft. So it is a platform as a service offering. In this, you have quite a few components you need to understand. So on the left hand side, you see these are all the developers who will be accessing these APIs. So these are the folks who are going to interact with these APIs and maybe they want to use that API for their usage as well. In order for them to subscribe to your APIs, they will use the developer portal. So this portal is also built uh, for you whenever any developer wants to subscribe to certain APIs. Now you have a management plane where your APIs is hosted or you manage the policies related to it. You manage the gateways and all these things from this management plane. Now gateway is an area which acts as a front end for you. What this gateway does, it helps you to connect to your apps. So whatever app you are creating, for example, if you're creating a flight deals app, that app connection will happen from here. So people might be using their web browsers, their mobile devices to access this app. So they will interact to this app gateway. This app gateway may be deployed in cloud or this app gateway may be deployed on premises as well. You may use some Kubernetes cluster as well on premises or you may host it on logic app, functions, web apps. All those options are available to you, which you can see over here as well. Then. You have some backend services where you will be basically connecting to maybe some uh, backend website like the airline booking website. So you can basically define those connections over here as well. So these API providers may be using Visual Studio, maybe using some other options to provide you those backend services. So when I talk about API management, it helps you to build this kind of a setup for yourself. Now, in order for you to create an API management service, you have to log into the Azure portal. So once you log into the Azure portal, you need to go to this API management service. Under API management service, I can create a new API. And once I start creating an API, I define the subscription and resource group. I define the region in which I want to deploy it. 
And if I see over here, I have the option to provide the name of my API. So let's say if I'm deploying it in East US, the name of my API is let's say API M. When I type this, you'll see I'll get an error. It tells you that this service is already in use. So whenever you provide a name of your API, it has to be globally unique. OK, so I'll just add some random words to it so that this is a unique enough link. Now then you define your organization name. So your organization is maybe flight deals. So you can define that name over here. Then you define an admin email. So I'll just define, define some random email. So you'll define your proper email where you will receive all the updates from Microsoft. Now if I scroll down, I can see some pricing tiers. Now what is the difference between all these pricing tiers? If you search for API management pricing, you will go to this website and on this website it shows you all the differences between different plans. Some of the differences you can see is developer plan is good for development operations. You don't want to deploy a production kind of a workload. Basic standard and premium, all three supports a production level workloads. Then you have isolated plan, which is for enterprises, large enterprises. Consumption based is like a serverless model available to you, which will help you to execute the plan and you'll be paying less uh, for the number of queries that you're going to send to it. So if you see the differences, you can see all the differences related to SLAs. You can see other differences as well. For example, some of them will allow you to host your own gateways. Other plans will not allow you to host your own custom gateways. So all those options are shown to you. Just go to, to this website and you'll have a detailed understanding of all the pricing plans. So depending on your needs, you will select one pricing plan or the other. Once you have selected it, you go to monitoring. And if you want, you can enable application insights and you can monitor your data using application insights. That's available to you. Then you have scaling options. In developer and consumption plan, you don't get scaling options. But if you select premium plan, if I select a premium plan, I will have the opportunity to scale up to 10 units. Think of these units are like uh, your compute capacity available to you in the backend. The more scale units you have, the better you are able to scale in the backend. After this, you define manage identity. In order for you to interact with different services, you can use it like a service account. Okay, so you can use this manage identity to interact with different applications. Maybe you want to talk to storage, to web app. All those connections can be made by using this manager entity. Then you can define, do you want to configure this API management in a network or you want to connect to it over private endpoint? So if you want a private IP, you will connect over the private endpoint. You also define some user facing protocols. So you define the triple DA ciphers. You define the TLS version you want to use. You want to define the backend side uh, TLS version that you want to use. So all these protocols, can be defined over here what protocols you want to allow the users to connect from. Once you click on review create, this is going to create this API management for you. After this API management is created for you, if I go to APIs, I can develop my own API over here. Now there are multiple options you will see over here. One of those options is you define your own API. If you define your own API, you can define maybe if you're hosting your API on a Windows VM, or on a Linux VM, you can connect to them by using any of these methods, WebSockets, GraphQL, uh, or other options as well. If I want to create an API from a definition like OpenAPI, WADL, or WSDL, I can create those APIs over here. But let's say I have already have a Azure resource where I have hosted my API. So I can find those Azure resources over here, and maybe I can connect to a logic app, I can connect to an app service, a function app, or a container app. So let's say if I go to function app, I can select my function app over here. So you click on select. And once you click on select, you'll find your function app over here. And maybe if your API is hosted on a function app, I can select that and I can select that over here. Once you do this, you can define the function app name, display name and other settings. This suffix, whatever you're going to define, your URL is going to be connected to that suffix. So maybe if I call it, let's say flight, test. Flight test, you will see this URL will be appended by the same. So your URL is going to become this. So suffix will be added for you whenever you are adding those API URLs over here. So you may create an API 
and connect it to a service which you have already created or or if you are already running it on azure you can just bring those resources over here if you want to create an api from scratch you create those over here so api is a bunch of methods that are available to you so if you see all these are methods available to me like flight booking flight cancellation all of that is a method that i'm connected to so create an api and inside that api you define methods of your own okay so if i create a new api over here i can click on add api and then i can select from http so i want to create a new api for flight wrapper okay i can define this name and the url i'm going to just keep it as flight tracker so my overall api will become this name if i click on create this is going to create the api for me once your api is created inside the api i can define quite a few things so i can define a bunch of operations so bunch of operations or methods form a api for you and you can have multiple apis created over here okay now let's say i'll show you an example of pre created api if i go to flight booking api on this api i have a front end so if i go to get flight booking details i have a front end i have a front end which you can see over here so i have a front end so user is going to connect to this front end from this front end they are going to go to inbound processing and over here i can define different policies depending on my policies different rules will be processed for me so maybe i can define rate limit only 60 requests can be sent over here or i can define some other rules like maybe uh, you want to get some status maybe i want to get a 200 status whenever everything is okay so i can define that over here in this policy then back end is where your application is actually hosted so all of your request is going to go to the back end and your application is going to interact uh, or your api is going to interact to your back end applications after you have interacted with the back end application i can go to outbound processing and in this outbound processing i can again define some other policies like i want to modify the header so usually you will see some values like powered by powered by maybe abc so you will define your team name if i want to modify that header i can do so in this outbound processing after this outbound processing is done the request is sent back to the user so you have this overall workflow which is run for you in order to uh, allow this api to work now besides this i also have a developer portal so you'll find all these rules over here so you see rate limit rule in this rate limit rule i have defined that last five calls can only be run in 60 seconds if i go back over here and if i want to talk to this api maybe i want to only check uh, last five calls so i can go to this testing area and i can see how many calls i can send to my backend so if i start sending the calls first call is okay and flight booking is flight booked similarly if i do calls like five times after five times i will receive an error over here i am seeing 200 okay now but if i send more than too many requests i am going to receive this error over here so you can control all of these things using policies now if i go back over here on my api management so on, on your... my api management you also get a developer portal so you can see you can go to your developer portal so you can see your gateway url is this so anyone who is going to talk to your front end is going to talk to at this this url and your developer portal url is this as a developer i can go over here and i can modify how my developers are interacting with my api service so i can maybe change the name of this website to welcome to uh, maybe flight deals flight deals and i can maybe publish this and you have a lot of other features available to you as a normal user you can subscribe to it so as a normal developer i can sign up to this service and maybe i can get this api available to me so i fill out all these details when i fill out all these details i'm going to get an email like this welcome to this api program and your request has been submitted now once i'm logged in there what i can do i can go to products so you sign up to this and you sign in to your portal if you go to products you'll get the opportunity to subscribe to certain products where do you get these products from so basically these products have to be created by you so if i go over here under products i can create my own products over here so you can see there are quite a few products already available maybe if i click on this add i can provide a product name basic product and 
maybe I can provide publish option in which any user can basically subscribe to this and they will be automatically uh, connected to this API. Or I will say they require a subscription. Even though API is published, in order to access it, you will require a subscription for the same or you require an approval. So you have three options available to you. So in, in approval, you have to approve the request. Only then they will be able to consume your API. So they have to pay like one dollar before they are able to consume your API. And maybe I can define the subscription count limit. Maybe only five subscriptions are allowed. I can also define legal terms based on my company and I can basically add all the APIs I want to expose to. For example, I want to expose my flight tracker API. I want to uh, expose my flight cancellation API. Maybe my uh, flight booking API as well. So I create a product and I, if I create a product, I have to define a please follow laws of the land. So maybe I define these legal terms. And if I click on create, this is going to basically create the product for me. So you define a description and you define some legal terms. And once your product is created, what you can do, you can go to the developer portal and you can subscribe to that product. You'll find that product over here and you basically click on whatever API you want to talk to and you basically provide your own subscription name. So this is test subscription. I agree to the terms and I can subscribe to it. Once I'm subscribed as a developer, I can access these APIs and work with these APIs. Once you subscribe to it, you'll receive these emails. So your sub subscription request has been submitted. And once it has been submitted, the person who's the admin, they have to approve the request as well. So you go to any of these subscriptions and you'll go to access control. And over there, you will get an uh, update that you have to approve some request. So you will see all the administrators who are who has access to this. If any user subscribe to it, they will also have access to it. And under subscriptions, you will see uh, what user have sent their request and it is, it is pending approval from you. Once you approve the request, they will also have access to these subscriptions available to them. OK, so all these options are available to you. Plus, there is one more option where you can go to your. Where you can go to, let's say if I don't want these URLs, OK, I don't want these URLs to be there. Uh, that are accessed by the users. What I can do, I can go over here under custom domains under deployment infrastructure and under custom domain, I can define my own custom domain. So let's say if I own a domain like cloud tech trainers.com, maybe I own this domain. So what I can do, I can define this custom domain name. I can define where I want to apply it on the developer portal, gateway management area or any other area. And then I define a certificate that I want to use for this. So you select your key vault service and you select the certificate you want to allocate to this. So once you allocate the certificate and you select it, basically you can create a custom domain and using that custom domain. Now your developers can access your page by using this uh, custom domain name available to you. So for developer portal, I want to use this custom domain name. Once I add it and save it, this is going to save this custom domain for me. I'm not going to save it for now, but this is all about all the things you have, you have to do in order to subscribe to API management. Also, you will see final subscription approval email over here. So it is going to show you that your subscription has been approved and you can access your subscription. Okay.